and congratulations. Thank you. And uh, what pleased you the most about that? We did some work on Thursday when you play against the 3 5 2, and I knew Barnet would be better with the ball than they were last week against the Oval and uh, more expansive. So if you play, we played Dawkins in a friendly year and they played 3 5 2, and because we were so eager to get fit, we all ran around, ran out of our shape, and got pulled apart and lost the game. So it was good, it was a good friendly to have. So today we did. Uh, we, we executed what we did on Thursday, which was who pressed where, making sure that we didn't come out of our wrong areas. And because of that, I just thought we, we looked comfortable throughout the game. We never looked like we were overloaded in any areas. I imagine you have given this game massive amounts of thought in recent nights and weeks and days. And every time I wonder, you did you see it going that comfortably? No, no, you never see it going that comfortably. You never know what you're going to get. I thought that if we... If we didn't let their shape override us, then we were the better team. That's what I thought. Um, and, you know, that was going to be my biggest quest on Thursday and Friday in the match prep. And that's the bit I'm most happy about because what we did on Thursday didn't allow their system to override us. And because of that, I felt we got control of the game. Uh, it's raining again now. Fortunately, we're just about under the roof of the Derek Pavis stand. But that rain in the first half, how, how much did that impact the game, did you think? Well, it impacted me. I, <laughs> I, I had a waterlogged dugout and I was trying to find an area I could stand without soaking my feet. I couldn't stand out there because I could hardly see a thing. And I didn't want my hair to look messed up, Obviously, you know, for yeah, telly. No, so uh, I, um, I, it, was, it was tough. And, you know, we were just trying to say to the players just you know stay with it and, and the, the key message was sometimes the players feel that they should be dominating you know that expectation and knots we're at home we should be dominating I didn't want the players to get anxious if they weren't and you know we just kept saying stay patient don't worry if it's nil nil because we know with your Carl Roberts with your Carl Wilton's with them sort of players we know that we've got goals in them. Uh, talk to me about first of all the Christian Dennis goal because that is it's just Dennis all over that right Fox in the typical box. Dennis um, great finisher um, he's looked sharp since he's come back in so's Wes so's Kyle which is really really good um, but I think it's probably uh, I think it was a Jim O'Brien left foot <laughs> cross that, that I thought it was Doyle wasn't it oh, was it Doyle I thought it was Jim I don't know but we couldn't see through the rain was it <laughs> it was Jim so uh, what do I know yeah you know Jim's dug out a lovely cross and um, when you've got three attack in the box sometimes it can that can occupy the centre halves, and Deno stole him. Cal Roberts, the Geordie Messi. Talk to me about him. We love to get him in them areas. I think he's enjoy playing for us because you know we get him into lovely little areas, even in the first half. I think he tried too hard a couple of times to, you know, dribble and make it happen. But as soon as he got that ball for the second goal, um, as soon as he got it, I went, "Come on, lad, bit of magic." In my head, <laughs> you know, I kind of said it to myself, "Go on, lad, little bit of magic now." And you know what he did at Barrow, where he shakes the shoot and and rolls inside and it's a great finish. Here comes the rain again, just in case you're listening and, and wondering what on earth that noise is behind. How difficult was it for you to, to settle on a, an 11 for this one? I think obviously Enzio and Rawlinson were two that were omitted today um, and that will have raised some eyebrows. Of course it would. Um, you know, listen, Connell's been immense. We know that all season. Um, and you know, I, I did say it's, it's like a whole new start of a season. You know, you can't look back on it. And in training, Ben's looked exceptionally sharp. So's Alex. You know, and I just thought, based on the games that we'd watched, I wanted to be fair to the squad who were fighting for the shirt. Based on the games we'd watched, they deserved the nod. Um, you know, Joel Bagan come in, and Joel's got a calmness about him. Zoom's more athletic up and down the pitch, but we just felt with him that we, we might keep the ball a touch better. Um, you know, with his calmness. And, and Jim O'Brien's been exceptional since he come back in. And I didn't want to pin Jim down to a centre midfield spot where he had to do a lot of the donkey work that Mitch and Doyley do so well. So, you know, we played him off the left and I thought it worked well. Is any part of the, your squad selection, was it not so much maybe this is my best team, this, is, this was my fittest team? Yeah, there was an element of that. I thought that the way the game might go, I didn't know whether Barnett having that game last week gave them an extra edge in fitness. And I thought the way the game might go, uh, it might get stretched. And, you know, I looked and Jim... Doyle, you know, Cal Roberts, they're quite clear-winded and they can do that kind of up and down the pitch. And I just thought we'd use Enzio and Wes. If the game got stretched, it would be the perfect time to bring them into it. How odd was it being here without the fans? Because this was a game where you would have thought there would probably have been 16, 18,000 people in here. The atmosphere would have been absolutely bouncing. How did you find it? Yeah, I, I'm gutted for them. I'm gut it, 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 it doesn't feel great to, to win in without them being here. And it will certainly feel eerie next week at Wembley. But hopefully, uh, if they're in the pubs or they're around friends' houses and they're watching it and they're having a few drinks, hopefully they're celebrating. Yeah, and Wembley next week, how does that sound to you? 
It's great. Um, I've obviously been there with Wimbledon and I've played Spurs in the, uh, in the FA Cup when they were using it as their home ground. It's a fantastic place to go um, and I feel like we've got the players who, who can, can deliver on the day. How do you get them ready for that now over the next few days and how long do you give yourselves to just appreciate the job that you've done today? Yeah, forget about it, uh, you know, give them a couple of days off, forget about Wembley. Uh, we won't even focus on Wembley till next Friday. Uh, yeah, Friday, Saturday, that's when we'll focus on the game. Just the rest of the week, we'll be, keep ticking over, get the, the, the miles into the legs again and, and keep working on stuff that makes us a good team.